Nothing. You assume God does not exist. Isn't that? No, no, no. Do you assume? Agnostic about that. Oh, now you're an agnostic. Well, circular humanism does not believe that. I have read the manifesto of the circular humanist, right? Circular humanist. Doesn't say that. The gospel, which I. Hey, what's the matter with you? I'm talking to him. Wait your turn, okay? No videotapes. Eyewitness testimony. Ah, thank you. Uh -huh. What? Oh my goodness me. Aristotle's dictum. Acta Boyotica. You know what that is? You are innocent until proven guilty. But you've turned it upside down. I'm talking about you because you're the one who brought up circular humanism because that's your philosophy, right? Right. So you have to defend it. I'm not interested in other people's inputs because they're not circular humanists. Okay? Got, they've got their own agenda. I know, that's why I call it. But then, if as a society we realize there's a general bad that affects a marginalized, group, say maybe, I don't know, gay people, right? If as, as a society we're killing gay people, and then we realize that killing gay people is wrong, yeah. this is the beauty of secular humanism. Yeah, but where you, you get, but where you get like morality from? Common sense. Common sense, yeah. Common sense yeah. by whom? By whom? By us as The people. individuals? Individuals. We uh, look at but, behavior, we look at our uh, environment, we go, this is what works for the majority of us. This uh -huh. is what so in other words, what works by the majority? So the majority rules. The majority rules. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can the majority be wrong sometimes? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So how would you know when they're wrong then? Because when you have data to show that they're wrong. And if they refuse to accept that? Then they, have then they have problems. But the problem this is the problem with religion because religion is bolted down in fixed rules. So if in the future we go, we have a new idea that doesn't that changes, <coughs> improves the quality of our lives as a people. Religion goes no because the God said you must do this. You cannot change your mind. That's uh, the problem. But then you're running. Not circular humanism. Setting stone. But circular humanism is running away from God's order because we don't know that God exists. Ah, that's your opinion. Which, well, which it's, an opinion. Yeah. It's, based on, it's an opinion <coughs> based on what we observe. <coughs> no, That's it's an opinion. Nobody knows. It's, it's an opinion which you want to hold on to. If we knew, no, no. It's we an know. Opinion. Okay, what if there's data that contradicts that opinion of yours? Then it has to change. The opinion has really? to change. Really? Absolutely. Okay, who was Jesus Christ then? Who was Jesus Christ? Of history. Of history. Of history. Of <laughs> history. <laughs> of I wouldn't say he's a prophet. Jesus okay, as a circular humanist, who was Jesus Christ? Somebody back in the day. How do you I don't know? think it was divine. I, I don't doubt Jesus existed. <coughs> I think he existed, but I don't think it was divine. I don't think okay. he rose again from the dead. I think he just got to it because he spoke too much. How do you know he existed? How do you know he existed? I don't I'm know. asking you, not me, you. I don't know that he existed. I'm saying I don't doubt that he existed. So you're assuming he existed? No. I'm saying I don't well, doubt that he existed. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're assuming he existed you can't, you then. You can be indifferent about something. Like maybe, maybe not. But you can then go in and say... Would you like to know for definitely he existed? Yeah, I would like to. Right. Have you read that first century, second century authors who are not Christian who agree existed? I can even grant that Jesus existed. That's okay. what I'm saying. Like, I don't have a problem saying he existed. Okay. Yeah. Right, let's move on then. Who I'm exactly was he? What did he say about himself? What did he say about himself? Yeah. Uh, what did he say about himself? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He believed he had a... Who was he according to his own criteria? I don't, I don't know. You tell me. You're the Christian. No, I'm asking. Have you investigated? I have. What, what, I what, know, what were your conclusions? Well, my conclusions come from the fact that there are different books in the Bible with different agenda. <coughs> so I don't know exactly what he had in mind. All right? What I do know is he had different ideas and he preached. He was Jewish. He preached good. Uh, he, he was a bit of a, a rebel, so to speak. And then he got killed as a result. Okay, Jesus made a lot of statements. One of them was, if you see me, you sin God. Now, have you ever heard anyone in world history saying that statement apart from Jesus? So why would he say that? Was he a liar? Yeah, but people walk around here saying they've, they've been taken by aliens. It doesn't mean it's true. Okay, thank you. Right, let's go further. 
If somebody makes a statement like that, is he lying? He might be, he might not be. Okay, is he a lunatic? Maybe. Is he telling the truth though? Maybe. So which of the three do you apply to Jesus? You will look at the evidence. Right? Okay. Say, I'm the son of God, and you go, how do we know you're the son of God? You understand? Show me, and then they show you things, and you go, oh. Okay. Makes now, sense, right? now, since you're a secular humanist, you don't believe God exists, let's look at some of the criteria you can use to say about God. You're a secular humanist. So if I told you this is God, you would say, uh, what kind of description is this, right? So if I look in the Bible, what does the Bible describe God as? So that we're sure we're talking about the same person, okay? The Bible says God is all-powerful. God is omniscient, can see things past, present, future. So for example, God can see Adam and Eve were being created like you now. I'm trying to, I'm, yeah, that's, I just said that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that is my presupposition. Okay, oh, so it is a presupposition. Uh, yes, why don't, don't you know this? No, that's they, basic logic. So, you are a presuppositionist. Everybody does that, no. including no, you. No. You assume God does not exist, isn't no. that? No, no, no. Do you assume? I'm agnostic about that. Oh, now you're an agnostic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, circular humanism does not believe that. No, 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 I have no, read no, the no, manifesto no, of the circular no, humanists, no, right? Circular humanism doesn't say has that. to do with God. It doesn't. <coughs> you're talking about atheism. The atheism only speaks to the existence of God. You have atheists that are not secular humanists. You have atheists that believe we're created by aliens. They don't believe in a God. We're created by aliens. Right. What kind of atheist are you then? A hard boiled one, a soft boiled. I just don't believe in a God. I'm not convinced that God exists. So you don't believe God exists? You're not no, convinced? I'm not convinced. Okay, 2,000 years okay, ago, yeah. God came one, to one Earth. One more statement to that. Yeah. I'm not convinced that God exists. Yes. Until it's demonstrated to us. So that's not saying... Oh, God I like that. Do you know God has demonstrated that? Yeah, me out. Right. I will finish. I will finish. Okay, carry on. I'm not saying that God doesn't exist. Right? There's a difference between saying that God doesn't exist and saying I'm not convinced that God exists. Yeah. If you say God does not exist, you are sure that there's no God. Or somebody would be definite. Uh, that, 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 that that one, I, I said that about the Abrahamic God. The Abrahamic God, I'd be like, I don't believe. That one to me is, that one doesn't exist. God in general, I don't know if there's a Hindu God, I don't know if there's a, an Asian God, I don't know if there's a, a you know, South American. You see the point I'm trying to make? The God title, I don't know if that one exists, but the Abrahamic God, I'm certain. Right. I'm so certain that one. God, if you do, is God the creator himself only of all the universe and everything in it? So it depends on the God you're talking about. No, I'm giving you that. God, the God right, there's only one God who created all things. According to you. Right. There are many gods. It's you're, a no, I'm not. God, in, I am, I'm interested in the creator of the universe. How do you know it's one creator? Right. If he has told us, are we going to accept his word or deny his word? He demonstrates it. Okay. Now, Jesus demonstrates he is God, the creator How? How? of the universe. How? By his authority over sickness, for example, over creation, which obeys him. Where does that come from? The Bible? How do you, ah, that? That. How do you have authority over sickness? Right, yes. A leper came to Jesus and said, Lord, heal me. Jesus healed him. So, but that's right. a story from the Bible. How Hang on, let's go on. Yes. Right, even the circular people agree that Jesus did many miracles. They cannot dispute that, okay? Read Flavius Josephus' works. Pliny the Younger, Roman historian. They're not Christians. They agree. Jesus did amazing things. They cannot. They don't dispute that. Okay. They don't believe him as a as a God, but they say these things. There's nothing we can do about it. It didn't happen. Okay. Big man, you always have to believe that. What's happening? Are you traveling back and forth? What's happening? Oh. Say again. Letting people know to get out of the way. <laughs> He wants to be known. Ah, right. <laughs> he's here, he's here. You are? Am I fine? Yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Donald Duck went that way, I believe. Anyway, the point is, these are attributes of what God should be like, and therefore, if, if he has demonstrated it, then we say, let's take another closer look. So Jesus talks about himself. He says, look, before Abraham was, I am. 
Now, hold it. Now, let me. The context is Israel, which believes in one God. So along comes a man that they think is only a man. And he's doing things that only God can do. So they get upset, very angry. They pick up stones and they want to kill him. Now, why would they want to kill him for saying, before Abram was I am? Why would they want to kill him for saying that? Why? Why do you so, think? So, this is my problem with this conversation. A lot of the claims of the things you're making, you're saying, it comes from a book. The same way somebody can take a Harry Potter book and read <laughs> stuff about, you know, platform nine three quarters and then make claims about physical places and they did this and that. And then 100 years later, somebody says this happened. Yeah? Have you read the Babylonian Talmud? The Babylonian Talmud? Yes. I have read it. What, it, I, have, what I have done, though. Do you know what it is? It's an independent source of information which confirms what's in the New Testament. I disagree. Oh, oh, we haven't read it. How can you say you disagree? You have not read it. Why are you here on this? Can I ask you? You haven't read it. Okay. Can I ask you one question, sir? Is it relevant what we're talking yes, about? That's why I'm jumping in. If you, with respect. Yeah, of course. What? With respect. You mentioned him, somebody called Moshe Musa, or Mo, what we call in Greek words Moses. What about him? What was his birth name? What? What was his birth, Hebrew name? It's a Moshe. 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 Right. So the Levite family was the place he's into. It's Moshe. That is not his birth name. That is his name. That is not his birth name. The princess name. Moshe comes from an Af it's an African name that was given by Pharaoh's daughter to that child born of whose brother was Aaron. Well, so what's the pro what, what they, what's what your problem? What were they doing to all newborn males? What, what's your problem? What were they doing to all newborn males, the royal family? Oh, go read. It's being silly now. It's being it's irrelevant what we're talking about anyway. Yeah, are you saying that Harry Potter, blah, blah, blah? That's why... my problem with the book. Right. The problem is... We're making a lot of claims from this book, right? Given that, especially knowing that in today's day and age, what we know about the way the world works, a lot of the stories in the Bible we know are not true. So why would you then take a claim from the Bible and then say that one has to be true? Are you following Aristotle's dictum on how to read a book? Am I following what? Aristotle's dictum, Acta Boyotica. Do you know what that is? Explain. You are innocent until proven guilty, but you've turned it upside down. You are guilty until I prove you innocent. You can read any book in the world, you assume it's correct, unless you have archaeological, historical data that shows it's wrong. Does that sound logically? Sound, does that sound good? Don't think? That's how we do things in academic worlds. No, it's not. Excuse me. Things are cited. Of course. Right. Have you read this? No. Do you know who wrote it? I don't know. What's I, I the name? What's the <laughs> name? What's the name? <laughs> right. Who was he? I don't know. Educate me. I don't know. Right. He was a senator for the Roman Empire. Right. He's not a Christian. He's a Roman governor. And what he's writing is a short history of the Roman world from its origins until further after Christ. So he mentions Jesus right here now in passing. It's not a big chunk, right? This is what he says. But on your own, why are you reading and believing that? In your own interpretation, what you're telling him. But this, this doesn't right. have anything to do with it. Yes, it does actually. Right, let's see. If you see what I've highlighted in yellow. Okay. Yeah. What does that have to do with it? Okay. 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 Right. So what is what is uh what is the, what is Tassid is talking about? Talking about the Christians persecuted. Why? 
I don't know. You can just shorten it. Come yeah. on! I, I don't doubt the. I don't doubt whatever the book says. But my point is. The point is, he talks about Jesus Christ here, and yeah. he says, "What does he say about him?" It was what? What? What happened to Jesus Christ? You can explain to me. No, I want. I know. No, no. I want you to read. That's what he wrote. So you read what he says. I don't doubt. Because you've never read Tacitus. Yeah, okay. He is, says that Christ was crucified uh -huh. under Pontius Pilate. Okay. This reference is one of only two that we know from historical analysis that, that shows that Jesus was crucified under Pontius, Pontius Pilate. Pilate. Yeah, but that right. Mean so right. why was he crucified? Could it be for well, not a why. I don't know. It could have been right. You don't know. Yeah. But that, the, 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 the New Testament writers tell you why. And the Babylonian Talmud also tells you why. And these two agree. Yes, Christ was crucified because he claimed to be God. Well, the creator. How was that divine? The one who made the universe and you. But well, how is that divine? Right. Yeah. Now. What, that's the charge under which he was crucified for. I can do right. that. Yeah. Nobody but else. Mean it was divine. Right. Yeah. So what happened to him? What happened to his dead body? Is he saying that I be resurrected? Excuse me. He's telling you he was crucified. Yeah. yeah. That's the end of that guy. Okay. Now, who can tell you about the resurrection? I don't believe in resurrection. Oh, who can? The Bible. No, who? No. Eyewitnesses. Eyewitnesses. Yes. <laughs> so right. Need, what? Need. Right. Where are you right now? Right. How will anybody know that you were here in May 2022 in London, 1,000 years from today? How will they know that? No videotapes. It's eyewitness testimony. Ah, thank you. Uh -huh. isn't what? Isn't as efficient. Oh my goodness me. Absolutely. Have you ever been a court of law? Court of law, that's a thing. Anybody, have anybody, you anybody ever lawyers, if have lawyers, you, tell have you. Have you ever been there? I have been in court. Right. What happened in the court of law? Eyewitness testimony is not as valid as empirical evidence. As I'm any lawyer. I can see you. Yeah. You can see me. Yeah. You're wearing sunglasses, right? Are there prescription sunglasses just ordinary? Right. I can go tomorrow morning to a judge. Were you a speaker's corner? Yes, I was. What did you see? I saw a young black man, maybe about 20, 30 years, Max I would say, who's wearing glasses, sunglasses. Is that true or false? Now, if I told a judge you were wearing a helmet, that's, that's a lie, isn't it? A lot. But right but now, and that before the judge, yeah. he's gonna ask me, was he wearing a helmet? I say, oh yes, your honor is wearing a helmet. And this guy comes up and says, sorry, your honor, that's not true. So his testimony is valid because you can see that I am lying now. Okay. However, he's saying I wasn't wearing a helmet. You're saying I was wearing a helmet. How will we know who's telling the truth? Okay. Are you willing to die for a lie when you know it's a lie? Am I willing to die? There are people that have died for lies. When they know it's a lie. When, when, you know when a they lie. know it's a lie. No. Yeah, well, ah, so. big difference. Yeah, yeah big difference. Some I people. Some, okay. Yeah. Now that the apostles of the Lord Jesus, yeah. they were willing to die for Jesus, preach the resurrection, not somewhere far away, but right there in front of the enemies in Jerusalem. They told the people in Jerusalem, Jesus is alive. So they're going to say, oh, really? Let's go check it out. Go to the tomb. It's empty. Uh, yeah, we told you. Now, are you willing to die for that fact? Yes. Yes. You can kill me, no problem, because I know I've seen him. I've seen him in my own eyes. I even touched him. Okay? So you can do what you want. There's nothing else. I'm a witness. That's what I'm with the witnesses. They were willing to die for the truth because they knew it. Not because somebody told them, but checked, they checked it out. Paul of Tarsus had a mission to get all the Christians in jail. And yet he met the Lord Jesus in order to Damascus. So why would he turn around and start building churches, get persecuted everywhere he goes, 
If he knew it was a lie. Is it possible? Huh? Is it possible? Yeah. For people to die for something they believe is true, but is it actually true? That's possible. possible. But let's narrow it. Did these apostles do that? Did they? The tomb was empty. There's your answer. Well, you got that There's the your answer. No, no, hold it. Hold it. it. You could go to Jerusalem. I've been there. The, the tomb, tomb is Jesus empty. It's empty. In Jerusalem. That's right. You know it's empty. Yes. Jerusalem. It's on the Mount of Olives. It's empty. Two thousand years. Tomb of Jesus. Yes. In Jerusalem. That's, That's right. Jerusalem. That's the whole point. Two thousand years ago, there was a big rock in front of the tomb. Who rolled it away? When the body of Christ was behind it, who rolled the two-ton stone away? It's not hard to imagine people could come up with stories. No, no, who, there was a rock. There were Roman soldiers. Right. Who, what was a Roman soldier like? He was a fierce machine. Uh, if you look at the annuals of Roman justice, Roman soldiers, if you slept on night duty, you were burnt alive in your own clothes. When the centurion came and said, you were sleeping on night duty? No, no, no excuses, you were dead, okay? The Roman army was very strict in this discipline. So they put the guard at the tomb. Six to 12 soldiers. Behind them, a big rock. And on the rock, a Roman seal. In other words, the tomb was now Roman Empire property. That's why the soldiers were placed there on guard. If you come and try to mess around with them, they kill you on the spot. So who rolled away the stone? Is it saying that book that Jesus put in the tomb? Excuse me? <laughs> no, what you do historically, you gather all the data from different sources. That's what I did. So where do okay. We, where now, do we know that Jesus was born in two outside the Bible. Oh, read Jewish history. The, the Jews that divided two groups today, those who love Jesus and those who don't. Jews believe okay. Jesus born in two. What? Jews believe Jesus was born in two. Yes, it was standard for Jews to put a dead body in a tomb. Okay. People that, were, people that were crucified as a disgrace. Yeah. Were they were body. normally burnt away in the in the hill of Ginon. Saying, I don't think Jesus was well, excuse me. You have not read all the data. Have be honest. You haven't. Now I'm asking you. I'm asking you, sir. Have you read all the relevant information? No, I haven't. That's your problem. You haven't. I have. Okay. Okay. Now I have found historically, right? that the tomb was empty and therefore you have to give an historical answer not religious you have to say what happened to the dead body why did the roman soldiers run away when they knew they could be killed under roman law for desertion okay and how did they get rid of that rock that was in front of the tomb that was used as a security device my question to you is, what extra biblical sources confirm that Jesus was put in a tomb after he was crucified? He was put in a tomb? After he was crucified, yeah. What extra biblical sources confirm that? In the first century, that was common custom to put someone, especially when he was high, uh, highly esteemed, but in, Je but in Jesus' case, it was slightly different. Why? It wasn't his tomb. It was joseph senator of the high court of israel the supreme court of the land uh, yes i am senator who was senator joseph senator joseph well you should what i am but you're ignoring the data senator right if i tell you that tony blair uh is a friend of mine People say, what? Unless I'm telling the truth. I would say, hey, we we'll actually play together. Yesterday we played tennis. They'll say, really? Now, why, what, what's happening here? I'm using a well-known politician. I don't care whether they like him or not. No, he don't. The point is, he's my friend. 
and he is a member of the establishment. Senator Joseph was a man in the establishment. Now, what was the establishment's ideas about Jesus? They wanted to get rid of him, except for two guys, Joseph and Nicodemus. They objected and said, hey guys, this is wrong. Shouldn't be doing this. So Joseph has got a conscience. And he says, you know what? That was wrong what we did about Jesus. I'm going to put him in my own tomb. So Jesus had no tomb. Where's the source that confirms that? Ah, Jewish history. Jewish history. Jewish history. Jewish history. That's right. So the Jews, you say the Jews say that Jesus was put in a tomb after he was killed? Yes, put in Joseph's tomb. And they don't dispute it. They don't dispute it. Why? The Jews but, don't dispute it. No, they don't. Because to them, case closed. So to them, okay? Jesus, to them, Jesus was not the Messiah. Oh, the that is beside the point. I'm talking about the we are talking about the tomb. Okay? That tomb, that tomb where Jesus was interred did not belong to Jesus. It belonged to Joseph. Okay? Now, the Jewish people don't doubt that because they say that's normal, no problem. We don't argue about it. So why are you arguing about it? Because Jews don't say that. The Jews are spoken to, they say Jesus was not, unless he's spoken to different Jews. What? And they are around, okay? I'll ask them, I'll ask them just to be sure. <laughs> but to my knowledge, yeah. Jesus, was, Jesus was killed and crucified. Yes. But he wasn't born into And he did not. Uh, hang on! We're talking about his burial. Was he put in a tomb or not? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying he wasn't. Right. He wasn't. Who told you that? I don't know that he was. Well, what I got... Why is your biblical sources? Right. We got, we got eyewitnesses that were there. Eyewitnesses that wrote stuff? Oh, what's wrong with that? Because people lie. Oh, excuse me? When I go home, you believe I you could... The Bible is correct? So when I told you that I could write a sorry man, you, wearing sunglasses on Sunday in May 2022, is that a lie? It's possible that you can lie. Is that a lie? It's not a lie, but it's possible. Do you, are you saying Okay, you're why would I lie? Well, lie? I just made a statement, three of them, right? Uh, are those lies? Uh, are you not wearing sunglasses? I don't doubt that you're saying the truth. My point oh, is, so you, are, you, are, so you can't so take How would any... What well, I'm an eyewitness. Yeah, but right. you could be lying. So, why should I lie? People what's the, what's the motive? Why do what? What's the motive? People have motives for lying. Yeah, what's the motive? I don't know. But people... Well, it's up to you to, 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 to find it, not me. You're the one protesting about it. Yeah, well, right. Now the, now, the eyewitnesses were people that were convinced against the presuppositions. James did not even believe Jesus was the Messiah. Paul did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And yet they switched. Why? Why? A lot of the things they say come from the Bible. Why? No, the church. Excuse me? James was killed in Israel by people that did not believe in Jesus. Okay, that's common knowledge. That is, but James was a half brother of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so why did James believe in Jesus? When, when he was growing up, he said, oh no, what a disgrace. Why did he change? The Lord, they're talking point. No, why did he change? Let's talk about it. No, 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 no. Why did he change? Why did who? James change? Yeah, James, yeah. James said. Well, why don't you study? Why would I study what's not true? Okay, what about Paul? Why did he change? Why did Paul change? From yeah. Saul to Paul. That's both of his names. Exactly. Why did he change from being a person that hated Christ to one that loved him? I don't know what he had, what his agenda was. Well, he find has out. No bearing on have you read? Survive. Have you bothered to read what he says himself? I've read, I've read what Paul said. What does he say? Paul did believe in the celestial Christ. Like he did. He did yeah. What? Yeah. He, show me one verse that talked about Paul talking about a physical Jesus. In the oh Bible. my goodness! One Corinthians chapter fifteen. Jesus appeared to the apostles first, of whom I am the least appeared, of them. It's not a physical. Yes. He Paul appeared physically after his resurrection. You're telling me, Paul, yes. Jesus died and rose again from the dead. Thank you. Hallelujah. You got it at last. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The whole chapter is Paul telling you that. 
Oh, yes, said so right there. Okay. <laughs> Something to, to, to take out this out of your book, which is not written in your book, or you just listen to what is it in it. You also recognize other people's wish. There you go. It says, says out. "Moreover, but brethren." Yeah, God does not exist. Well, what's the matter with you? Thank you very Thank much. you. Right, I'm answering him. Yeah, rude. I'm talking to him. Right, this is what Paul says. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I... Hey, what's the matter with you? I'm talking to him. Wait your turn, okay? Are you from Switzerland? No. Germany? You don't need to ask me. Oh, so I don't believe. Are you from rude. Are you from Europe? You're very rude. Hi. Do you know what the dinosaur is? Yes, my best buddy. Sorry, let me talk to him. I'll be with you. <laughs> that? What? What have I got in there? See this guy? He's the biggest animal that God ever made. You, by you, are better than a dinosaur. Because... Well, it doesn't matter, does it? The... T-Rex. Uh... Yeah, T-Rex is my buddy. But, well, but don't, you, don't you believe God made the dinosaurs? Did God make the dinosaurs? Do you even know the Sorry? Well, this guy was pretty big, wasn't he? Who do you think was bigger than T-Rex? Ah. <laughs> okay, right. Now, do you, do you know who made the do you know who made the, the real dinosaur? Do you know who made the real dinosaur? No, not this rubber one. The real one. Who made the real one? I didn't. Yeah, no, God made them. But do you know that God made you? And he says he loves you. He says this guy, <laughs> I just made him. But you are special. I don't need to know a lot about them. What I do know is that they're wonderful creatures, fearsome, but God made them. If they're wonderful creatures, what happens if they eat you to death? What? Uh, <laughs> Imagine if there was one rifle, a rifle right behind you and they ate you to death. This one's going to eat you up. <laughs> no, that's okay. That doesn't matter. The thing is, God made them. Your, your mom and dad are God. <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. A megalodon! Wow! No, but do you know where the word dinosaur comes from? Do you know who invented the word dinosaur? Dr. Richard Owen. He was a Christian and a scientist. And he worked in the Natural History Museum about two miles over there. And he said he called this dinosaur, which means terrible lizard. The old name was Dragon. That's the old name for it. So he made a new name in 1843. Is it true? The dinosaurs are not dinosaurs, they were dragon? No. The dragons have wings. Yeah, some dinosaurs had wings. Dinosaurs don't have wings. Oh, yeah. what about a Platosaurus? No, Sikiosaurus. Ah, what flies. What about a flies? It's flies. Do they breathe fire? Yeah! Do you know there are little dinosaurs today that do the same thing? They breathe fire out? No, do you right. know? Do you know that? Have you ever heard of a bombardier beetle? Do you know who he is? He's like a baby dinosaur. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beetle, which looks like poop. 
Duck. No! It's an amazing be beetle. What it does is got two chemicals in his body. It's got two storage chambers, right? It's got hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinine in one side. So when he sees a friend, he says, hello, buddy, you okay? Yeah. But if he sees an enemy coming, he goes, choo, 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 mix them up, and then he breathes fire out of his mouth. Well, how come Bombardier Beetle does that today? Today. Well, he does it today. The little beetle, which actually fires, it breathes fire out, literally. Yes. Yeah, it's got, it's got Bombardier Beetle. So, so if you can have a little beetle that does that, so you can have big ones like dinosaurs that can do the same thing, no problem. Do you understand? You can actually go and ask your teacher at school, yeah. can you tell me a, a little bit of Bombardier Beetle? That's the name of them, Bombardier Beetle. Yeah. And, he, and he tell you exactly what I just told you. Say thank you very much for your... It breathes time. fire out. <laughs> Sorry? I didn't hear that. They're all fake. But it's not fake, it's a real beetle. What's your proof? But he's alive today! Where's the proof? The proof? Okay. You have to show us. Okay, ask your science teacher. You go, well, in school, right? Ask your school teacher, sir, I heard this guy speak at school in London, right? And he says there's a bombardier beetle this size. And when he mixes these chemicals, hydrogen peroxide, hydroquinone together, fire comes out of his mouth. Is that true? And he's going he's to say, yeah, what's your problem? You can actually see pictures on the oh, internet about Bombardier Beetle. What? Your proof has to be shown. Show, show me. A, show me. Show me. I, I don't have one to show you. I'm sorry. I'm not a zoologist. <laughs> But it's not fake. Why? Just because I don't have it with me? The proof is we're all sinners. But I, I teach I teach big boys about business. <laughs> yeah, welcome, sir. God bless you. <laughs> right, what I was trying to show you is that Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 actually shows a whole chapter about the physical resurrection of Christ which the other people before him had experienced. Jesus so, talks, Paul talks about the resurrection of Christ? Yes, he does! Where, where, where? The whole chapter is about it. Show yeah. me the part where he talks yeah. about it. Go read that carefully, see for yourself. Oh, I forgot. Where's that kid? Is he gone? It's proof that we need Jesus. I mean, you can see the sin. product. You can see the product of sin, can't you? Oh, absolutely. I heard a bloke talking behind on a bus stop. He was swearing at somebody on the phone, effing and blinding at somebody. Ooh. I thought that is typical flesh. <laughs> that is flesh. Absolutely. People say to me, "Where's the proof? Right there. Be that man behind me. Yeah. Why is he swearing and cursing? There's something demonic. Yeah. Bring, bring, bring it out. Yeah, yeah, I know it's bringing. Can't talk to the person cursing? Courtesy. Why is he swearing at the person? I know. The no need. Oh, it's like that. I'm teaching at a college, right? Business studies. Oh, yeah. And these are kids that came out of school two years ago. So they come to college and their behavior is atrocious. They swear. They, and I'm, thank you. So they do all this. And I'm going, guys, you just came out of school to college and your language is terrible. What's going on? And if kids behave like that, that's why you need the police. Exactly. Why do you need the police? Because the police. <laughs> Yeah. Flesh gets out of hand. Yeah, exactly. Why do people get out of hand here at Speaker's Corner? Because the flesh takes the over. Fl the flesh is right. They start swearing yeah. and then they turn demonic. Yep. Oh, we are. Jesus is life. Amen. That's right. Jesus is life. The creator of the dinosaurs and everybody else, as the child was asking the question. And Jesus is coming back again. Amen. God bless you. Any messages to, to uh, words that become flesh? I suppose agnostic. But I, I know you were having a long conversation with an agnostic towards the end. Oh! And, uh, so do you need to oh, put in words on what life. happened on that debate? Yeah, what is interesting is that the agnostic uh, is into circular humanism. So we try to show that God speaks through his conscience. 
uh, he was beginning to understand that, but then he's, we switched back to the resurrection as the evidence that God exists, because the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the prime example or proof that God does exist, because Jesus says, pay attention, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And that's the book of Revelation. So Jesus is the one that died, was buried for three days, and then came back from the dead. Death uh, could not hold him. Exactly. Death could uh, not hold life. In the uh, world. And death is the enemy of everybody. Yeah. So Jesus is the one who overcame death. Life overcomes death. Absolutely. I am so the, way, the truth, and the life. An agnostic has to go back to the resurrection of Christ and deal with that. Life, that I know. Well, and that's it. Uh, so when we read 1 Corinthians 15, the agnostic ran away. Yeah, <laughs> he was he reading it. Life wants to touch you. Amen. So read the Word of God, the Holy Bible. It tells you about life and death. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Banda. God.